Our next speaker is uh, Susan Blackmore. She's going to talk about fighting the fakers and failing. What's really interesting about uh, uh, Ms. Blackmore is she, she was a parapsychologist for a number of years. Uh, I think the only parapsychologist who is speaking at TAM, I know for sure this year. Uh, she, but now as a psychologist, she researches memes, consciousness, and uh, anomalous experiences. So her haiku is this. Now I am conscious. I used to be unconscious. I like this better. <laughs> Please welcome Susan Blackmore. Thank you. I don't know. Do I really like it better? Sometimes I lie in bed at night and think, I just go to sleep. Ah, oh, it's too painful being conscious. Do you ever think that way? No? Yeah. It's quite agonizing being conscious, isn't it? Now, um, Hmm. Okay, do you know who this is? What? Shuri Blair, well done. I thought, I'd have to, I thought you'd all be ignorant Americans and I'd have to give you a clue. Um, here's a clue, aren't they lovely? Um, but the point is, what is she wearing? Hmm? Pretty, isn't it? Nice, attractive thing. Sort of natural, and doesn't it make you feel kind of warm and pleasant to look at that lovely woodland scene? And how about this? She's got one on too. So, don't you think if two of the wor world's most powerful and influential women are wearing this thing, perhaps you should consider wearing one too? It's called the bioelectric shield. Well, I wonder whether you would benefit from it. So let's try a little quiz. Are you ready for a quiz? Okay, what I want you to do is I'm going to ask you four questions and I want you to answer either yes or no. Okay? Truthfully, I want the true answers, all right? So here we go with this quiz. Right, first of all, um, do you work around computers, electrical equipment, th uh, um, I need my glasses, I'm so old, uh, fluorescent lighting or in an office or a school environment or around sources of electromagnetic radiation? Yes! Well done. Are you impacted by other people's energy, stress or moods? Yes! Do you experience low energy, irritability or stress? Yes! Does travelling tire you? Well done. Well, if you answered yes to even one of those questions, you could benefit from a bioelectric shield. You see, <laughs> yes, good, you're getting the hang of this. You see, it will protect you from all that nasty electromagnetic radiation which weakens you and makes you feel stressed and puts you down and so on. It will shield you from all those other horrible people who are kind of emitting nasty vibes that get to you. And it will strengthen you Physically, muscles, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. You can't resist, can you? Well, imagine I'm going back a while because it's a long time since I did this sort of stuff. I should perhaps confide in you, although some of you probably know, that um, I gave up all this stuff quite a long time ago. I'd had enough of it. I couldn't stand it anymore. And they kept inviting me to town, and I kept saying, no, I don't do that stuff anymore, no, 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 leave me alone. But after more than a decade, I kind of plucked up the courage to go back to thinking about these things. And here I am. I'm glad to be here. But it kind of... Thank you. Thank you. It brings it all back. It brings back the day in 1999 when I was sitting on a plane and the only newspaper available was the Daily Mail, which is not my normal favorite reading, and there was this picture of Cherie Blair. And I was incensed. And I guess you need something to drive you, don't you, to do the hard work. And this is one of the reasons I chose this example, just one example of the many things that I did over all those years. Because you need some kind of motivation to make you do the hard work involved in really finding out it could be true, you know, couldn't it? I mean, it could be true that 
specially aligned crystals hanging around your neck all day could balance the, the, the energies of your body in such a way as to protect you? It doesn't sound very likely or very plausible, but we shouldn't just, just say, can't be, you know? So we have to investigate and to find out the truth about it, and that's what I decided to do. So I wanted to do some experiments. Now, the interesting thing about the bioelectric shield as opposed to some other claims, is basically these are straightforward testable claims, which is, you know, really helps. If it says it strengthens you physically, well, you can measure muscle, muscle strength, whether you get stronger or weaker. If it says it protects you from the bad effects of phones, you can measure those effects. And so you've got a good starting point. But it also is particularly susceptible, as you can imagine, to all kinds of expectation effects and placebo effects. So if I hang something around your neck and tell you you're going to feel better, however skeptical you are, it may have some kind of effect. So obviously you need some kind of a double blind test. So the bioelectric shield lends itself pretty well to a standard double blind um, experimental design. That means you've got to have some real bioelectric shields with the real crystals and the real balancing and all that, and some sham or placebo um, or copy uh, empty uh, bioelectric shields that are indistinguishable from the outside. That's quite a tall order. But I was lucky. I got in touch with the UK distributor. Now we're going back to almost the beginnings of you know, email not being very efficient and the not, not being much of an internet and so on, um, web, web I mean. Um, so this was all kind of to begin with letters and ringing up people. I found the UK distributor and he put me in touch. His name is David Chambers. He put me in touch with the manufacturers. Um, Charles Brown, who invented the bioelectric shield, and his wife Virginia, who runs the company. And after long uh, toing and froing, they said they really wanted the, their marvelous product to be tested and they would provide me with six real and six sham bioelectric shields. Right, so now I've got to design the experiment. What I wanted to be sure about was that they couldn't cheat and I couldn't cheat because it's got to go both ways. You know how many people say in response to Randy's million dollar challenge, well, he'd never, you know, I could be psychic and he'd just cheat and pretend I wasn't. You know, they do that. And I didn't want that to happen to me. And I wanted it to be genuinely fair and open and equal. So the way we did it in the end was we asked them to send us the six real and six sham bioelectric shields numbered with some random numbering system that we would, would not know and they would keep the record of, of which of these, you know, 1 to 12 were real and which were sham. Meanwhile, we, back in Bristol in my lab, would get 12 volunteers, um, all women in the university, and we would assign six of them to wear the real thing and six of them to real, wear the sham. And we would uh, letter them, A, B, C, D, E, uh, you know, up to 12 letters, and keep a record of those uh, secretly in the lab and then we would invite them to come and they were willing to fly all the way over from the States to Bristol and to come and bring the piece of paper with the numbers on and at that point we would show them the results and we would open both the lists and match them all up. <sighs> yes, got a good design, off we go. So what we did was uh, we had these 12 participants, and uh, first of all, we got them in for a practice, and we measured their strength with a, um, um, a hand dynamometer. It's a kind of, you know, you have to go like this several times, and you can measure your physical strength. We gave them a mood scale to measure um, alertness, happiness, and calmness, which were three of the things that the uh, bioelectric shield is supposed to help. And we gave them an alternative therapies questionnaire, which um, measured how much they believe in the effects of alternative therapies of various kinds. Then for two weeks, we measured all of these things uh, regularly. And then we, and, oh, you have to remember, the bioelectric shield takes 24 hours to balance to your personal energy fields. <laughs> so we got it balanced, gave them 24 hours, gave them 48 hours. I think we gave plenty of time for it to balance to their energy fields. 
Uh, then we had the baseline measure, and then for the experimental time, uh, it was between five and eight weeks. It was very difficult to get fit all the tests in, hence the varying length of time, in which they wore either the real thing or the sham, and they uh, didn't know which was which, and we didn't know which was which. My assistant did it in such a way that I gave them the shields. He knew the number, the letters. I didn't, and I gave them the shields. So it was truly double blind. So then, um, the day arrived. Virginia flew over, came from the airport, came to the lab, and I was really like, we've got to be absolutely accurate here. You know, we won't have any kind of Randy Magician kind of tricks going on. You know, what they're going to play on me. I've got to be really, really careful. We've got to be absolutely sure about the time when we open the, open the, the lists and everything. And in comes this lovely, charming lady. Oh, hello, hello. Do you want my list? Do you want my list? Here you are. No, 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 no. Take it away. Take it away. Sit over there. And she was just so nice and friendly and all my kind of fears about, about magic and trickery. And I thought, oh, she's just really, she really believes this stuff. So the first thing that we did was to give all the data. Um, in fact, uh, these are separated for real and sham. But what we showed them was data like this, um, but without the numbers on, and asked uh, them, this is Virginia and David from England, to, on the basis of these data, we gave them all the data for each subject um, with the letters on, to choose which they thought were the people who had the real shield. Because if the bioelectric shield does what it's supposed to do, then um, they ought to be able to pick out pretty reliably which people are wearing the shield, the real shield, and which are wearing the fake shield. The statistics work such that if they got six right, obviously it would be highly significant. If they got five right, it would still be statistically significant. If they got four or fewer, it would not be. So it was really exciting. They chose, there are the 12, lots of data laid out. We let them have as long as they wanted to look at the data. There was a hand strength and you know, all these different bits of data for each subject. They poured over it and they definitely, definitely, these six are the real and these six are the fake. And we opened the, the envelopes, we compared the numbers, cross-checked, let them cross-check, put the, them on, and they got four right. It was kind of frustrating because that's a little bit more than the three that you would expect purely by chance, but it's not significant, so, okay. So, we proceed. After that, we could then go and analyze the data properly, which is what we did. And you can see here just an example where we can compare the uh, data for the um, real people the people who had the real shield on the left with the people who had the placebo on the right. And you can see just by eye that it's not very convincing. I won't show you all the data. Um, it's probably sufficient to say that none of the differences that we found were significant. And they were kind of strange. I mean, if you look at this lot, the, uh, the shield is supposed to increase alertness, happiness, and calmness. It appears from this that it decreases alertness, it doesn't do anything to happiness, and it does increase calmness a little bit, but not very much. Um, but uh, all these differences are very small. And in fact, you would expect alertness and calmness to be uh, negatively correlated, um, because they're sort of related to measures of arousal anyway. So, what next? Well. When they looked at this data, we took them off for lunch in the university, not very glorious canteen, and we sat there and talked about it, and they talked to each other, and they looked pretty down, you know? They looked kind of like, sort of reminded me of the um, man who was abducted by aliens and had an implant in his mouth, and I showed him that it was actually dental amalgam, and he was really quite low for a while, and then, anyway, they were a bit like that. Um, they were kind of like, oh, we should have got more right. And then they started to realize what had happened. You see, subject B hadn't been wearing it long enough. You see, there are some people that it doesn't, 24 hours isn't enough. It can take a whole week, even two weeks for some people to balance to their energy. And obviously that one was one of those because you could tell by the way the, the data went that she was one of those people. 
And what about this person? Oh, well, that person began with a very high alertness in the first place. So, of course, that isn't a fair test because it, 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 you know, it wouldn't work. And by the time we'd finished lunch, they were very, very happy indeed with all the data. So they, um, they said some people blocked the shield's energy, some people needed longer. But the real clincher was that they said, and this came later when, they got, when she'd gone back to America. She said that she'd gone to the factory where they make these things, and a man who puts in the crystals puts them in with positive intent from his heart. <laughs> and the trouble is that he's so used to doing this in this positive environment with this positive energy that when he was asked to make sham ones, he couldn't really do it because he's still giving out the positive energy. So that the sham ones really were kind of working, even though they didn't have any crystals in them, they still had the effect. Mm. Well, it made my life a little bit difficult, but there was another claim that I wanted to test. And this was the effect on mobile phones, because at this time, we're now talking 2000, um, there was beginning to be a big scare about the effect of mobile phones. More and more people were getting mobile phones. And it was said that they make you weaker, they make you stressed, they make you tired, and you need something to, um, to protect you from this bad effect. So here we have another classic testable claim, very, very you know, reasonable thing that you can test. So we did experiments in which, um, with these experiments, we took, um, we had 40 subjects. These were not such long-term experiments as the previous ones. Um, didn't do them over weeks and weeks. We did them over a much shorter period. But again, half the people had uh, sham ones made this time with definite negative intent for the sham ones and positive intent for the real ones. And the, we took a baseline measure of the um, strength and then give the people the phone and you would expect them to get weaker because the phone, they held the phone, talked to the phone and listened to somebody talking um, for 10 minutes and they should get weaker and then do it again with the phone and with the shield and all randomized. And here you can see the results. Um, doesn't quite fit what it's supposed to do. So you've got the baseline. Unfortunately, the groups were not equal uh, on the baseline, but it doesn't matter because you subtract from baseline. So with the phone, well, they didn't uh, get weaker, actually, with the phone. Um, the, um, uh, so the middle one is, is with the phone for 10 minutes, and then the, the last one there is with the phone and the shield. And as you can see, the real one made them quite a bit weaker. Um, and it was supposed to make them stronger. Oh dear, the bioelectric shield doesn't really seem to be doing what it's supposed to do. So what was their reaction to the phone experiment? Well, it was as follows. Now this is, um, comes rather later. Um, hang on a minute, let me just, eh, it won't go backwards. Um, the, the, the phone experiment, um, which, which we did and got the negative results, we did several other experiments as well, and we had them all published in a journal called Alternative Therapies. And after that was done, and they, we had sh shown them the, the paper, they'd seen it all, they'd agreed that it was an accurate description of the experiment, and it was published. And after that, we got the following uh, letters from them. Dear Dr. Blackmore, regarding the bioelectric shield study, over the last several weeks, you and I have determined that there was an email sent to you from our company that you never received. In this email, we informed you that the samples we gave you for your study had mixed up the real shields with the sham shields. Not knowing this, you published your study, and in return, we were quite surprised to see the study published. Since that time, another trial study done by an independent group of researchers used a heart rate variability test to judge the effectiveness of three devices that claim to reduce the effects of electro electromagnetic radiation from cell phones. This was published in Alternative Medicine, September 2002. I was from Virginia, and from the inventor, Charles, 
The shields were then returned. When they were returned, they were physically opened to see if the coded numbers had been correctly assigned. This revealed there had been a mistake in the numbering of some of the shields. Now note that alternative medicine sounds much like alternative therapies. Alternative therapies, where we publish, is a peer-reviewed journal. Not a great high-impact journal, to be sure, but it's peer-reviewed. It's a proper science journal. Um, alternative medicine is just a magazine. And uh, they wrote an article and it went in there. So, what can you do? <laughs> this is why I titled my talk, um, uh, Fighting the Fakers and Failing. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of um, success in a way. We did a decent experiment, we designed it as well as we could, we got the results, we published them, but it has very little effect. And the people concerned have always got some way of coming back to it. These are just some more results with a larger number of subjects in which you can clearly see whether the effects of the phones are really nothing at all. There was... Pardon? That's the one you missed? Yes. There were several like this. We did several more experiments. One thing that was quite interesting was that it's quite possible, obviously people are buying these things and being happy with them and thinking that they really do make them relax and so on. Why? Presumably because they have some kind of placebo effect. And if that's so, you would expect a larger placebo effect in people who are score high on the alternative therapist questionnaire. I mean, the questions in there are things like, you know, do you use homeopathy? Do you, uh, have you ever had, uh, what's it called, um, acupuncture? Um, do you believe in the effects of this, that, and the other? And so you would expect a correlation um, between the score on the alternative therapist questionnaire and the people who improved wearing the shield, regardless of whether it was real and placebo. And that was the only significant result we got in the entire series of experiments was, yes, people with greater belief in the, in, uh, the effectiveness of these things um, feel better whether they have the real or the sham. The obvious conclusion from <coughs> all these experiments is that you can hang anything around your neck if it's called a bioelectric shield and looks very pretty and it doesn't actually need to have balanced crystals and all of those kinds of amazing powers. Well, I wrote to, um, we do have um, trading laws in Britain which say you are not allowed to sell ineffective things and make false claims. You know, we're a civilized country, you're not supposed to be able to say this thing will do all this, whatever. So I wrote to the um, Trading Standards Authority, a nice letter, simple letter explaining what I'd done, enclosing the published paper, and so on. And I got back a very nice letter after a while saying, Dear Dr. Blackmore, further to Mr. Taylor's letter to you dated the 6th of April, this matter has been allocated to me for investigation. As the nature of the inquiry is varied and complex, it will take some time to investigate. I will get back to you in due course and update you as to my progress. What year is it now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I did try. And I didn't have the energy and enthusiasm to go on trying. Come the year 2000, I'd really had enough. Could I have a drink of water, somebody, please? Or a drink of anything? Whiskey will do. <laughs> Gin and tonic would go down quite well at this point, remembering all the uh, miseries of it all. Ah, oh, yes. very much. And what is happening in the year 2013, which is where we've got to now, are you feeling fatigued, stressed, or overloaded? You can protect yourself with this innovative, all-natural EMF. All-natural? I mean, it's a manufactured product with made of metal. And, I mean, yeah, I suppose metal's natural, isn't it? Um, God made it all. Uh, you can protect yourself, and um, there's a chart. 
At the bottom there you see, this chart will assist you in choosing a level of protection which matches your lifestyle and your EMF exposure. So let's see what is available. At the very bottom of the um, chart, you can have level one. Of course, this one's only for babies and children and pets. Yeah, you get one for your cat. Um, but you could go up, level three is the specially recommended one. That's obviously the one I expect you to get. But you can, if you like, go all the way up to level four. I guess I don't need to say any more, do I? Other than, by the way, don't go out and buy one. How on earth did I get into all of this? Well, as some of you know, it all started a very long time ago. Uh, this is me back in 1970, when I had the most extraordinary out-of-body experience. I've written about it extensively. Maybe some of you have read about it or heard me talking about it before. It started sitting down, listening to some fantastic music, I don't know, Grateful Dead or Pink Floyd or something rather. And I was sitting there late at night, going down the tunnel of leaves towards a bright light at the end. And then I came out of the bright light and flew around over Oxford. And I mean, it was honestly an extraordinary experience. The term near-death experience had not been invented then. Um, but if, I, if it had been, I know that I went through all of those stages, the, the light, the, the, the out-of-body experience, the extraordinary emotions, the clarity, the vision, the coming to a boundary, the decision to return, but also classic mystical features of, um, of changing the nature of self completely to the point of ultimately self-disappearing or becoming one with everything. Classical mystical experience of oneness. I had no idea what to do with that experience. It was like a gift out of somewhere, you know. What do you do with it? I could not understand it in terms of 1970 physiology and psychology that I was studying. So I can perfectly understand why, and forgive myself, understand myself all those years ago for thinking that it was a paranormal phenomenon, and therefore deciding to devote my life to proving to all those closed-minded scientists that they are wrong, and there's more in, your, in the world than in your philosophy and all that kind of stuff. And that's why I became a parapsychologist and why I devoted so long to trying to, to, uh, to find paranormal phenomena and ultimately uh, concluding that they don't exist. And along the way, I had some fun and I had some depressing experiences. One of the most depressing was discovering that a, a colleague of my friend of mine, Carl Sargent, who was doing fantastic research on the Gansfeld, um, getting really amazing significant results. Uh, was actually manipulating the randomization procedure. It took me a long time to find out what was going on, and then a depressing month of, of misery. I was in trouble with the organization, the Parapsychological Asso Association, not him. Um, and I wouldn't publish until he would publish his side of the story. And years and years and years later, it was finally published. But you can see meta-analyses with all these data in, which do not ever reference the uh, papers in which I explain uh, what uh, manipulation was done and why that the results are invalid. They go on claiming that there's evidence in Gansfeld. I had fun with people being abducted by aliens. I slept in haunted rooms. Well, the aliens, I told you about the amalgam. Here is the um, nice young man and his uh, alien implant in the roof of his mouth. Um, I had all sorts of fun with that. I slept in the haunted houses. I investigated poltergeists. I did all kinds of things. Um, I was always in trouble with the, um, with the um, believers. I, I would tell you, when I was a believer, um, I did not get hate mail from skeptics. Are you surprised? Well, when I became a skeptic, I got plenty of hate mail from the true believers who know about spirits and nice things like that and good energies. And the most fun thing, the only thing I've done recently, was to investigate, would you believe there are still people having physical seances uh, with ectoplasm and all that stuff? Uh, I mean, we think of it as being a, a kind of a ancient Victorian uh, pastime where you have a, me a medium sitting in a cabinet and uh, physical phenomena coming out of the, the floor and lifting tables. Well, this is still alive and well in Bristol. I was at a seance last year. I just couldn't resist in the end going back. They said they had to have some music um, to, uh, to get in the right mood. And we had ABBA. <laughs> Da, 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 while from the cabinet was that's better. Uh, 
um, little feather. Oh, 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 I've had enough. I've had enough. I can't bear it. Oh, I hope you can understand, dear friends, why I can't bear to do it anymore. And I am so pleased to know that there are hundreds, thousands of you out there, not just James Randi, but all these organizations who haven't lost heart like me, who haven't lost their energy and enthusiasm for, 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 for fighting the fakers. Good on you. Keep fighting them and let me go home and give up. Susan Blackmore. Susan Blackmore.